After another delightful flight over the Andes and a brand of international airways El Conquistador, we behold beautiful Buenos Aires, queen of the Rio de la Plata and capital of Argentina, the largest city in South America and the ninth largest in the world. Within the wide circle of the city that unrolls before us, over four million people live, work, and play, while in the much wider area of Argentina, beyond our range of vision, another 12 million do likewise, all seeking to shape a successful destiny for their country through industrial and agricultural development. About a fourth of Argentina's 16 million inhabitants live in Buenos Aires, including the federal district, and suburban areas. Practically every style of architecture known to man is represented in this cosmopolitan city, which is growing from day to day in size and importance. The impressive building on the left is the general post office and through its gigantic portals pass the bulk of Argentina's mail. As in most of the cities of Latin America, Buenos Aires was originally laid out with a series of plazas around which the sectional life of the city revolves. Each plaza has a series of streets which lead into it like spokes in the hub of a wheel, as illustrated here in the Plaza de República. Its noted obelisk has been constructed in the heart of the plaza over an underground parking area that will accommodate 5,000 motor cars. Although there are numerous shopping centers throughout Buenos Aires where the usual assortment of cosmopolitan goods may be purchased, the most popular of them all appears to be the old Calle Florida, also regarded as the most famous shopping street in all of South America. After 3 p.m., no automobiles are allowed, a great idea. So everybody throngs through the narrow calle as if it were the featured street in a block party. Practically everything that the civilized world has for sale may be purchased here, and the prices are comparable with those of the world's cosmopolitan cities except the prices of alligator bags, which are surprisingly low and usually constitute the prize bargain for tourists. At the entrance of the Calle Florida stands a renowned old building, which houses the South American branch of the Bank of Boston. This is the Plaza Hotel, one of the largest and best of the city's many fine hotels where one may enjoy the best of modern accommodations and unusually good cuisine. The expansiveness of Buenos Aires is emphasized by its wide boulevards, many of which lead from the heart of the city to the distant interiors of the country. Although traffic gets a little congested at times, as in most of the world's metropolitan areas, numerous parks provide the wide open spaces for the city of good airs, and foremost among the park diversions is sailboat racing. Vying with this aquatic sport is a rather amusing pastime at Palermo Park, where the youngsters engage in unique animal races. Cyrus boasts of having the world's largest man-made swimming pool, and it is designed to accommodate 100,000 bathers. Facilities are also being provided for yachts and hydroplanes. All this is in line with the present government's gigantic public health programs throughout all of Argentina. Compulsory education and good health hand in hand, and the authorities responsible for both have spared nothing in the development of their plans. The ideal way to go sightseeing in Buenos Aires is in an open carriage from which one may behold colorful park vistas, 
interesting monuments, and life in general, all in the open, in tune with the clop, clop of the horse's hoofs as he trots along the course of his daily run. Cyrus is said to be the only large city in the world without traffic lights. Some years ago, the city fathers endeavored to install them, but the pedestrians seemed to think that this was an infringement on their civil rights, so the law of the lights surrendered to the wishes of the people, who still cross the streets whenever or wherever they choose, and heaven help the driver of a vehicle who claims right of way over them. Nevertheless, the traffic police do a fairly good job from their comparatively safe elevations in the midst of the conglomerate traffic. The tallest building in the city is known as the Edificio Cavanaugh, and here it stands overlooking the Plaza San Martin. This monument was erected to the memory of San Martin, the great liberator who led the forces of freedom against Spanish tyranny in Argentina, Peru, and Chile. This edifice is known as the San Martin House. It is a replica of one of the one of the one in which he died, and it is one of Argentina's most sacred shrines. Another monument to a great leader is that of Pedro de Mendoza, the old Spanish conquistador, through whose efforts the city of Buenos Aires was founded and settled in the year of 1535. It's a long span of years from Pedro Mendoza to this American embassy, one of the city's many foreign embassies which symbolize the importance of Buenos Aires in world affairs. The city of Good Airs is truly a great city, growing greater from year to year. And it is with this thought that we say, farewell to beautiful Buenos Aires.